Hey guys, what's up? It is John from FlyMyCalpha.com and today we're going to be going ahead and landing a 747 on an aircraft carrier because we can and it's fun. Um, and actually we're going to go ahead and not only show you this fun little video because we got a little bored here, but also explain to you why this is beneficial to you to know as a Cessna driver or a Piper driver or whatever small aircraft you so choose to fly. So you can see here we're struggling a little bit to get off the ground because those whole things about like rotate speeds and v-speeds that we have no idea about because I don't fly a 747 ever. Um, but it is super fun to fly one of these things, especially when you're 10 feet off the water. It makes all sorts of cool noises like this. Pull up! And then you can just keep going and it's super fun. Now somewhere out there, there's an aircraft carrier. Probably not in real life, but in this thing there is anyways. And we're gonna go ahead and land this thing on it. And what's interesting is how you land a 747 on an aircraft carrier or a fighter jet or any airplane for that matter, or how you land any airplane period is all pretty much the same. Now, obviously you have to be a little more precise with a 747 and scraping, you know, your belly in the water is not really a great thing to do with any airplane. Luckily, this one's got a pretty good sense of humor about it. But ultimately, that whole thing that you've heard about that three degree glide path that you kind of wonder, you know, how important is that really? Is that like, you know, a suggestion? What about if I approach shallower? Won't it be a softer landing? What if I approach steeper? Won't that be a hard landing? If I approach steeper, I can clear more obstacles. That'd be better. Well, there's a lot of reason that goes behind this whole three degree glide path. It makes a lot of sense when you actually start to try to use it. It actually turns out there's pretty good reason behind it. And the reason is if you approach too shallowly, if that's a word that we could even use, well, then it's actually kind of hard to get the airplane to come down to the ground. As you hit ground effect in a real shallow manner, you'll wind up kind of skimming across the ground and almost finding yourself get, kind of having a hard time getting the aircraft down the last 10 feet maybe to the point where you're hanging out 10 feet in the air, you're getting slow, you're gonna stall and drop out of the sky, but you have a hard time kind of coaxing it down. Of course, a four or five degree glide path, well, that's great, that's gonna bring you to the ground, certainly in some sort of fashion, it might be a little too aggressive. It's just gonna bring you down to where you may not have quite enough energy to actually rotate and flare, and you may rotate so quickly trying to arrest the descent that you actually exceed the critical angle of attack and stall the airplane as you're quick snatching back on the controls trying to flare and arrest that descent. So like kind of what we're doing here, we're yanking back on the controls, trying to flip the 7-4 over on its back, and we're really getting close to the critical angle of attack. There's only so much you can pull back before you exceed that. And even though you have adequate airspeed, yanking back super hard can exceed that critical angle. So that's why we're really going for a third degree angle. And that's ultimately what we're going to use here to plant this 7-4 right on the deck of that aircraft carrier right as soon as we get straightened around on this fancy pattern entry. It's kind of like, I don't know, a right base to final well inverted entry, I'd like to call it. Um, but whatever it is, it's working out great. And luckily enough, on this particular airplane, we have speed brakes, tons of flaps, and reverse thrust, all to help us get down, because initially here we are super high and we're not gonna quite make that through degree glide path, but we will get it stabilized towards the end at least. Of course, if this was a real airplane, we would be stable at at least 500 feet if we're VFR, if we're IFR, if we're coming off of an approach, even a visual approach, it'll like to typically be stable by about a thousand feet or so. And stable means airspeed's stable, it's not fluctuating. Descent rate is stable, it's not fluctuating. And you have that nice three degree glide path established all the way down to the touchdown zone. So as we pop the reversers here, throw out the speed brakes in full flaps and drop the gear and drop our tail hook and try to slam this thing down, we're eventually gonna transition here, slowly pulling up, closing the reversers to this nice three degree glide path. Now it's a little All short ball. here. Like you can see we're coming in just hair shallow, we Heading flare, hook our tail, and keeping those spoilers out the whole time, kept that descent rate going, helping us come down to the ground. We don't have spoilers in our Piper or our Cessna, but we can establish a nice through degree glide path that keeps us coming down to the runway rather than 
kind of flaring too early and leveling off and kind of getting into that hole coasting down the runway and not really sure where the ground is just knowing that you're getting slow and things are going to go bad soon in any case we made a successful landing on this aircraft carrier and there's not a whole heck of a lot of room on the deck there but it looks like we've got just enough room to squeak by and we'll go ahead and taxi up here to the catapult and get shot back off so we can go ahead and fly on back to Venice now Do a quick little flight control check here, and we're off. Now what's super fun about fake airplanes compared to real ones is I probably wouldn't try this in a real airplane, but in a fake one, we can go ahead and try a little roll. Kind of bring it all the way around, maybe try a little roll to the other side. And as we come back around from this roll, we'll go ahead and just swing right back around and see if we can plant this thing on the aircraft carrier again going the other direction. And pop quiz here, how many G's do you pull in a 747 in an 80 degree bank turn? Is it the same as in your Cessna? And in fact, actually it is. If you're in an 80 degree bank level turn, no matter what airplane you're in, it's going to be the same G loading. Obviously there's much greater weight loading on the wing, but same G force loading on that wing And here we'll go ahead and try to get her down, get established on a somewhat 3 degree glide path. Coming in just a little flat here, and oh, a little flat, we hit early, and we skid off the back of the aircraft here. That is not good, we'll need a little bit of power here, and ooh, this does not look like a good situation to me in. Go ahead and get rid of that yoke there and see what we can do with all this. We've got a pause break, we'll go ahead and lift our flaps and gear on up. Oh, look at that pretty water with all those dolphins and manatee and stuff down there. Looks so pretty. Oh, shoot. Ew. And you definitely don't want to smack your 747 into the ocean. It never goes well. It tends to flame out all four engines all at once. Really bad situation. Could really use Sully's help here right now. Hey, well, what is the uh, heading on our BOR selector there? Oh, let me see here. <laughs> I got her. I got her. Good thing I was here. <laughs> Folks, is the captain. I'm sorry about that. Sully saved everyone. Uh, just some accidental tripping. Yep, yeah, Sully did it again. Okay, yeah, Sully, you're not of any help at all. We're just going to go ahead and slide this one on ourselves. Fun fact, apparently 747s come with a sea anchor installed in them that you can deploy. And it kind of looks something like that. It helps you get slowed down. Then it has a tendency to kind of yank you on back and forth each direction. But in any case, although this might have been a little bit of a silly video, I hope that you guys did enjoy it and that you kind of got an idea here of why you use a 3 degree glide path. If you start to think about it, think about some of those landings where you might have flared a little early, kind of got about 10, 20 feet off the runway, maybe even just 5 feet off the runway, kind of been coasting along there feeling like, gosh, I can't bring the airplane down anymore because if I push forward, I might hit the nose. But if I keep holding it here, I know I'm getting slow. And I'm just going to drop out of the sky eventually. And the key there, well, there's a number of ways to fix that. But the biggest key is that had you made a stable, steady three degree descent all the way down to the runway, just to the last few feet, and then gently flared, you would have had the just the right amount of energy using the proper approach speed to flare, arrest the descent, put the mains down, and then bleed off the energy, let the nose come down on gently, and make a nice, smooth, soft landing. Remember... Good landings are not necessarily the softest. They are not the ones that you never even feel. You should feel a good landing. It should be mains down nice and gently, but a smooth, steady rate on down, and then holding the nose off until you run out of speed, putting the nose on, and applying a little bit of brakes, getting the airplane slow to a nice, safe speed. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you like the video, subscribe to keep up with our latest episodes, and leave us a note in the comments below. Let me know if you like some of these Flight Sim videos that we can have a little fun with. Maybe make some more for you guys later on. As always, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time.